Um, you don't you don't think the history is going to be too kind on the Balash brothers then? Um, well, you've got to remember that his historically, I mean, years ago, history was written by the victors, wasn't it? Well, they've had their victory at one level, another they haven't. History is now being written on blogs, isn't it? And do you think? Can and you believe it or not, in my forthcoming book. Oh, you're writing a book. Yeah. Oh, can you tell us? Can you elaborate? Well, not not yet. I mean, o over the years, I mean, the, half the stuff that's happened hasn't really sort of come out. Um, I very much regret that I've never kept a big file marked corruption, you know, sort of a big box of it. But um, and a lot of it's just scattered, all scattered with third parties in the UK, just in case I have an accident, as it were. Ah, so it's going to be. Can you? Uh, elaborate a little bit like it's going to be about the shall we, the Jersey situation should we put it that way I think yeah there's a Jersey situation but there's also we're, we're not unique it's worse here and more concentrated but don't forget when we look to our just look across the, the waters of the United Kingdom it's black white and grey over there over here it's just dark grey and, and there, there are glimmers of light over here but it's it's that grim result of a completely non-functioning constitution and um, with the exception of your good self and absence of media and so thanks yeah, for that. In, in, you know in England there is more media um, I think that we get hung up with what the big newspapers say but there's a lot more going on these days there are films there are blog spots there are people who write there are there's much more going on these days so you can't just in the, in the old days, the newspaper barons chose your prime minister um, simply by people aren't buying it anymore in the same way. So, I, you know, I think history will be unkind. I think history will be written from a very different perspective. Do you think we call them the old media? It used to be called the mainstream media. We now call them the old media because the social media is the new media. You, you, but um, do you think the old media, uh, this is what I believe, I don't know what you think, they're in fear of the Balash, but all the bailiffs, you, you just can't. I was cut off the radio the other day for saying, I think that William Balash might or could have had a vendetta, carried out a vendetta with his speech. And I was cut off the radio for saying that. I was never asked, hang on a minute, you know, where's the evidence for that? Well, what makes you think well, that? Well, I, I would agree, vendetta's a good word for what was what I saw going but on. But they there. didn't ask me for the evidence. They just said, well, that's it, you I mean, can't say that. The mainstream media over here is as bent as a nine bob note. Um, I mean, I think it's a little bit better up at the, the Evening Post. I think they're desperately starved for, for money to get quality reporting and time in the reporters and so on and so forth. But you could never have got away with the stuff that's gone over here if the press hadn't been as bent as everything else. I mean, it's just absolutely astonishing. And so, to finish on, uh, Advocate Sinel. If the position of bailiff I mean, remains... No, nobody over here believes in the mainstream media. I wouldn't say nobody, but I mean, some numpties do, but I mean, largely speaking, it's, you know, so take it with... You know, everybody goes, yeah, really? What really happened? I mean, unfortunately, we've got to that stage where nobody actually believes anything that comes out of anywhere anymore. Well, the um, latest social survey showed that 63% of islanders, or those surveyed, don't trust the mainstream media. Um, I think only only 25% trust the government, you know, uh, and I think 52% or something trust the judiciary. I mean, they're damning. Are they damning figures? Uh, you know, the mainstream media or the, the the old media, as we call it, have got it all to do now, haven't they? I mean, do you think the internet has? Exp I, I, I believe Operation Rectangle exposed that the that the media over here. Um, in, 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 I mean, it was in space. I mean, it was the most dreadful. Um, I mean, it was it was just mind bending. It was like what was it? Russian newspaper they used to have Pravda or something like. That. It was appalling. I mean, it was appalling. And reading that stuff had some very poor impacts on some very badly damaged people who could have should have been getting the ongoing support from their community. I mean we're a small community. Why isn't why isn't more being done by the average human being to go and help people and to accept them and all that sort of thing. It it's it's a very sad indictment on the island and um yeah.
I, think yeah, I, I feel quite distressed when I look at it, some of the stuff that came out. I mean, do you remember the Tooth Fairy? I mean, the Tooth Alice Fairy, the cellars that. didn't exist. I mean, we, we, we've shown all that, you know, on the, on, on, on the blog with Deputy Bob Hill. We went up to, to yeah. you know, and showed that the cellars did exist. We've got video of it, you know, but the media, the old media, just churned out this stuff for the likes of Mick Gradwell and turned against the well, survivors. It, 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 it's astonishing. I mean, I'm less involved uh, on the front line than you were, but I mean, I've had my meetings with, when I was going to the care leavers, I had my meetings with um, Mr. Harper in the porter cabin and saw the tooth, the teeth and things like that. Um, and I also read carefully, I think people underestimate it. If you actually read the forensic report at Hote de la Garenne, what it is indicating is a very good clean-up job. I mean, some, somebody just tell me why there were lime pits at children's home. I mean, that's astonishing. You read between the lines, and I've read a few forensic reports in my time. Read between the lines. Well, of course. And, and, re and read just the sort of overt stuff in there. Well, this is pretty much what we did as bloggers. We, we yeah. just didn't believe what was going on, and we asked questions. We didn't repeat the party line. Yeah. And, of course, not forgetting Ian Amarco as... Uh, Home Affairs Minister said the 65 children's teeth, some with roots still attached that couldn't have been shed naturally, uh, he said they all fell through this exact same gap in a, in a bloody floorboard up at Hotel Garen. Yeah. Now, of course, the media just churned it out. They didn't question it. It's, it's, it's a story. You wonder at the motivation of, of people doing it. I mean, I, I do come back to, I mean, like media is very, very important. I mean, you come back to the sort of mindset over here where that stuff gets, you know, people get to go, oh, yeah. Um, I don't think you can get away with that where um, in other countries where you've got functioning media, or other countries have dysfunctional media. If you have an um, authoritarian regime, the media kind of tends to, to, to play to party line, but then you're now getting those sort of branching out bits. Why anybody took that sort of stuff seriously, I don't know. I mean, just, just think of the realities of what we are actually looking at. I mean, it's, it's shocking. Well, the former senior investigating officer, Lenny Harper, when I interviewed him the other day, and we did, believe me, because a number of us, myself, Rico Sorda, some survivors, mm -hmm. and Bob Hill, uh, Daniel Wimberley, we all uh, tried, helped get the term of reference together. We had a, we had a yeah. fight on our hands for the care inquiry, get, and, yeah. and a lot of the term, and we, a number of us wanted the, the media to be included, the media's reporting or non-reporting, mm -hmm. in the terms of reference of the care yeah. inquiry. Uh, what do you think the report would have said about our old media had it have been part of the terms of reference in the it was it was my i mean the, there were days where I, I was actually distressed to read it it was just so just so appalling and, and and i cannot understand or forgive and forget really um i mean you've got to look at some of the allegations made in relation to some of the personages involved in it you know that may may explain what's going on but others others have not been accused of um, multiple capital offences. One of the things that always surprises me over here is, I mean, you look at somebody like Ian Lamarco. Um, he was the judicial greffier for a long time, so he did master the royal courts. So now it's he was incredibly good at it. You know, he felt he got a you know a fair hearing. He went on to become a magistrate, and I think he was well respected as a magistrate. Where I felt he wasn't. Uh, quite as human as some of the others. I don't think he got the common man occasionally. He was a bit, bit Mr. Beanish. But uh, as a judge, you know, you weren't going to, you know, you, you wouldn't say to somebody, for Christ's sake, walk around that one. And then he went and did these bizarre things um, in relation to Graham. And I remember writing to him, handwritten notes, saying, 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 you know, Ian, for heaven's sake, just, 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 what are you doing? You know, you're a man that I used to look up to enormously. Um, he did a good job in a judicial um, function for a number of years. Well, so, I mean, it's just, you know, once you get that mix where you move the rewards for the decision maker away from an impartial application of law to facts and facts to law, that's where it all goes incredibly wrong. And we've been seeing that over here for, for a long time. Because Sen Senator Lamarck, or former Senator Lamarck, Home Affairs Minister, has got a lot of questions to answer. Um, I was, I was, I was shocked. I still can't work. I mean, I'm deeply critical of some of the things that he did, but again, you know, I relate the man that I interacted with as an advocate for a number of years, both in the magistrates' court and in the royal court when he when he was master. You know, he went off in front of him, and you expected logic. You expected um, law to be applied to facts and facts to be applied to law, which is what you pay judges for. 
um, extraordinary slide, um, I would say a moral decline in him, you know, once he got that political bent to him. Well, there were people who argue when he was magistrate, he was sending and looking for more powers to send children up to Le Chien, you know, yeah. and I'm not sure if he was in, in, in contravention of the children's Jersey law 2002. You, you, you may well be right on that side of that character. I have to say that that's not something I was thinking of at the time. I'm just thinking, you know, my personal intercourses were not on that, the bits that I saw him do. Yeah. Um, and we did, uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't have, in what I saw, but again, you know, I, mean, I can only speak from, you from know, I speak first-hand as to what I've seen and how I've dealt with people. So the history won't be, key, won't, won't be kind to the media either, the, the old media over here, I don't think. What do I you mean, think? You could, you, could write a, write a, you could write a book about it. Um, you could write a, a You are, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I hadn't thought about editing a chapter on that, but you could write a lot of blog spots. Hmm. Um, you, you know, that distortion, um, it's extraordinary. It's like it's like we're having a badly motivated judge. They just rewrite the facts and leave the important ones out. It's yeah, it is. So it's, it's, it's like so. You know, you've got a population here that's been gaslighted. <laughs> the we've got to bring this to an end here. We're running out of time. Um, bringing it back to the the bailiff speech and everything. Mm -hmm. So, if the position of bailiff remains, um, will you consider putting yourself forward? No, no, thank you. Um, I've got no political or judicial ambitions. Advocates are now always a pleasure. All right, you're welcome.